Welcome to Bed Crime Stories Podcast. I'm your host, T. To my bed crimers, hi, how you doing? Hope you're having a great day. To anyone new here, a warm welcome. Thank you for checking out my channel. Let me just ask that after listening to or watching the video, if you find you enjoyed it or learned something, do me a favor, smash that like button and consider subscribing. Also, if you appreciate my work, please consider supporting the channel with a Patreon membership. Now, let's dig in. Well, guys, I don't think there are going to be any cameras in the courtroom for the Brian Koberger trial. That's just my gut feeling after what the prosecutors in the case did today. Today, Thursday, prosecutors let it be known that they support banning cameras from the courtroom in a court filing posted Thursday evening. Leta County Prosecutor Bill Thompson said that he supports banning cameras from the courtroom at a minimum during sensitive witness testimony, which he's worried could get compromised. He wrote about being concerned that cameras, quote, will have a substantial chilling effect on the ability of witnesses to openly, fully, and candidly testify about some horrible occurrences. Thompson further wrote, this case will necessarily involve not only evidence of a graphic nature, but also testimony from a number of of young and vulnerable witnesses, as well as a number of University of Idaho co-eds and families and friends, end quote. Prosecutors also cited the substantial attention from traditional media and social media at least partially for, quote, the threats and harassment which they say certain witnesses and their families and friends have suffered leading up to the trial. The prosecutors also wrote that they, quote, fully understand the enormous value that responsible media has in helping the public to understand the true facts of what occurs in court, end quote. But they also stated that they think that can be accomplished without cameras, either either still or video present for the proceedings. The prosecutors are also saying that the case involves significant physical and emotional components, both by virtue of the nature of the killings themselves, as well as the myriad circumstances surrounding the victims, their associates, friends, family, the residents at 1122 King Road, and so on. The state respectfully submits that the appropriate course of action would be for the court to prohibit cameras in the courtroom, both still and video, at a minimum during trial and during any other court proceedings at which victims, such as described above, might be called to testify. So at least for the issue of keeping cameras out of the courtroom, the prosecutors and the defense are on the same page. Koberger's attorneys asked Judge John Judge last week to keep cameras out of the courtroom for, quote, the remainder of the proceedings. They cited a gratuitous hyper-focus on their client from camera-wielding courtroom observers. They argued that coverage could prejudice a potential jury pool. So now that the prosecutors have asked for the same thing as the defense, will that sway Judge judge's decision. Well, not so fast. There's still that media coalition, and they oppose the request for no cameras. They're arguing that the cited examples from the media and social media that the defense shared do not support their position. The media felt that a broader review of media coalition stories actually showed that the media coalition's participants and other longtime media outlets had in fact heeded the court's directions on how and what to film. Judge Judge has not yet weighed in on the matter. A hearing is scheduled for the afternoon of September 13th for arguments on removing cameras from court. As of now, cameras are still being allowed. I would love for the cameras to stay just because I want to see and hear everything that happens. However, what's most important is justice. Koberger needs to get a fair trial by an impartial jury. That's true whether you think he's guilty as fuck or whether you think he's been framed. 
if no cameras in the courtroom can help ensure that he gets a fair trial, then maybe they shouldn't be in there. Also, any witnesses having to testify, especially the surviving roommates, should not be further traumatized in any way. If having cameras on them will add to their distress, then maybe no cameras should be in there when they testify. But all of that said, having public trials is something the U.S. Constitution guarantees and for good reason. The Sixth Amendment of the U.S. Constitution guarantees a defendant the right to a public trial, and the First Amendment guarantees the public's right to access criminal proceedings. Both amendments have the common principle that says courts should be open and transparent in order to ensure fair fairness, and accountability. The public has the right to attend and witness all the following. All suppression hearings. These are when a defendant seeks to exclude evidence on constitutional grounds. So the standard procedure is for the judge to hold a suppression hearing outside the presence of the jury, but those watching who are not jurors have the right to see this. The second thing the public has a right to witness are the voir dire sessions. Voir dire, which means to see and to say, is the process used by the prosecution and the defense when they're selecting a fair and impartial jury. So during voir dire, the jury panel is questioned by both parties' lawyers, the prosecution, and the defense. The questions are intended to help all the lawyers in the jury selection process, so the public normally has the right to watch voir dire. The third thing the public has a right to view are trials. And the fourth thing, if the defendant gets convicted, the public has a right to see the sentencing hearing, which as you may recall from the Lori Vallow Daybell trial, we did get to see the sentencing. We got to watch Lori Vallow, although she sort of had her head buried down and she was hiding behind her lawyers. So just like a defendant's right to a speedy trial, the right to a public trial was designed to protect both the accused and the public. For example, public trials can help ensure that there's an extra layer of accountability as the public can determine whether government officials are properly carrying out their functions. When trials aren't public, it's easier for things to be shrouded in secrecy and for rights to be denied behind closed doors. So judges actually have a four-part test that they can use to determine whether keeping the courtroom closed, meaning free of cameras, is appropriate. The Supreme Court laid out the four-part test. According to the test, trial courts are to consider four things. One, the party seeking to close the proceeding must advance an overriding interest that is likely to be prejudiced. Two, the closure must be no broader than necessary to protect that interest. Three, the trial court must consider reasonable alternatives to closing the proceeding and four, it must make findings adequate to support the closure. So we can see that Koberger's defense team is arguing that his right to an impartial jury may not be met if cameras are allowed in the courtroom during all the proceedings. They worry that there's so much interest in the case that the entire jury pool in Idaho could possibly end up tainted and prejudiced against Brian Koberger if the media and social media in particular, take what they witness during the proceedings and create content for the public that is prejudicial or damning toward Koberger. Thus, the defense wants the cameras completely banned, and they want it like starting yesterday. The prosecution also wants cameras completely banned from the trial, and they seem to be doing it mostly out of concern for their witnesses. They're afraid they might be subjected to further threats and harassment. The two survivors were definitely victims of these when the probable cause affidavit came out and people got upset seeing how long it took Dylan Mortensen and Bethany Funk to dial 911 on the morning of the crime. I mean, I think a lot of people still wonder about that. Of course, that doesn't give anyone the right to threaten or harass the young women. Definitely not. They've been traumatized enough and it's going to be terrifying for them if they have to be in the courtroom with Koberger. 
And it sounds like Judge Judge is going to have to consider reasonable alternatives to closing the proceedings, meaning he's going to have to maybe come up with some other ways to allow the media and the public a view in, like maybe what they did with the Lori Vallow Daybell trial, where cameras were banned for the entire trial, but the audio of each day's proceedings was released at the end of each day. Here are reasons that courts in the past have made the decision to keep the courtroom closed, meaning no cameras. One, closure to prevent witness intimidation. Two, closure to prevent the emotional disturbance of a witness. And three, closure due to age and intellectual capacity of a witness. So we shall have to wait for now for judge judges ruling on this. I think we can kind of guess where things are headed though. Until the next time on Bed Crime stories. Did you learn anything about the American justice system today? If so, smash that like button and I'll see you next time.